Unmanned technologies are actively developing against the backdrop of the full-scale war of the Russian Federation against Ukraine. In particular, UAVs carrying FPV drones have begun to appear. As Forbes writes, this allows for a significant increase in the range of their use and has become another technological step forward for the weapon system that has come to define this war. Small FPVs have proven deadly against tanks, artillery, infantry, other drones, and even helicopters. Their only drawback was their limited range, but that problem is being addressed. FPV strikes on Ukrainian forces deep behind their lines show that the Russians have deployed this type of system. The Ukrainian armed forces are using their own. Analyst Sergei Flesh noted that the occupiers were able to get objects at a distance of 40 kilometers from the front line. He suggested that two drones were delivered to our rear by a large reusable drone, the type of which has not been established. Because of their small battery capacity, FPV drone flights typically last 15 minutes or less, so the maximum possible range is perhaps around 30 kilometers. The drones waste a lot of energy just staying in the air. This can be remedied by moving to a fixed wing design, but operators like their small, cheap FPVs and engineers have moved on to the option of transporting them on other drones. Earlier this month, Russian developers unveiled one such system called the Burya 20. It appears to be a drone-type aircraft that can fly more than 40 miles from ground control and release multiple FPV strike drones. It has powerful optics for the operator to find targets and also acts as a relay station directing FPVs up to 9 miles away. The payload is more than 29 pounds, enough for multiple FPVs. According to the makers, the Burya 20 is already in low volume production. Another development is the Admiral, presented at the arms exhibition last year. The developers claim that it can transport two FPVs over a distance of more than 320 kilometers. The third FPV carrier, Chelka, was spotted in March of this year. The concept was obvious, but this was the first time I had seen it used against us. I had seen prototypes on enemy channels. Flesh wrote, suggesting it could be a helicopter or fixed wing type. The Ukrainian armed forces are also experimenting with a number of rotary wing FPV carriers. In May, the elite 414th Separate Battalion of Unmanned Attack Aircraft Systems, better known as the Birds of Magyar, received a large helicopter that can operate as a bomber or FPV carrier. There is also a new Hornet Queen, a giant UAV. It is also used as a relay. Drone carriers can go anywhere. In principle, the Shaheds that strike Ukraine or the Ukrainian Bobri Luti could carry an FPV drone instead of a single warhead to carry out multiple precision strikes on soft targets like parked aircraft or fuel depots. All it needs is a satellite communications or advanced AI targeting, both of which are now available. FPVs have already changed the shape of the front line. The Russians have created a 10-kilometer tank-free zone to protect their armor from destruction. At the same time, drone carriers are expanding this danger zone by tens or hundreds of kilometers. To counter this type of weapon, interceptor drones are being created. We may see task forces of FPV carriers moving into combat with fighter escorts and other support. The evolution will happen in months, not years. And other countries will be watching. The publication concludes. According to incoming information, which is recounted by former Russian commerçant journalist Mikhail Zygar, the real purpose of Putin's trip to Mongolia in early September was a meeting with shamans and cult representatives. According to Zygar, this version is being discussed by sources close to the Kremlin. He writes about this in the authoritative German magazine Der Spiegel. According to the information being retold, Putin needed the blessing of shamans to use nuclear weapons. Allegedly, Putin returned from Mongolia satisfied, writes the former editor-in-chief of Dozd. None of Zygar's sources can confirm this information, but the meeting with the Mongolian shamans apparently took place, the column claims. Social media users note that the information could have been deliberately leaked to Zygar in order to scare the West with the real possibility of nuclear weapons being used through the publication Der Spiegel. 
However, this version sounds like a big fantasy. None of my sources can confirm it. However, the meetings with Mongolian shamans seems to have taken place. The journalist adds, Zygar draws attention to the fact that Mongolia and Tuva, where Putin visited before his trip to Mongolia, are considered the birthplace of the most powerful shamans in the world. He also recalls that Putin has long been known for his special attitude to mysticism, including orthodox mysticism. Before the war with Ukraine, Putin also consulted with various mystics. Zygar writes, citing a source close to the Kremlin. According to the source, they all predicted Russia's victory. In support of the rumor about Putin's possible fascination with shamanism, a story is mentioned about how, during trips to Altai, the head of the Russian regime took antler baths. They are filled with an extract obtained from the cut antlers of Altai marls. In May of this year, the Russian government's leading proponent of shamanism, Sergei Shoigu, lost his post as defense minister. This didn't seem to affect Putin's relationship with the occult. He simply went to Mongolia and Tuva without Shoigu. There are now rumors in Moscow that Putin needs the blessings of shamans to use nuclear weapons. Without their approval, he could not take such a serious step, fearing to anger the spirits. And he allegedly returned from Mongolia satisfied. These conversations are evidence of how Russian society is developing. Many representatives of the Russian elite are becoming increasingly interested in otherworldly forces. Successful entrepreneurs, people who make the top 10 of the Forbes list, often do not make decisions without first consulting with sorcerers. The popularity of paranormal consultants has increased dramatically in the last five years. This is probably primarily due to the fact that they see no way to influence events in their country. Hopelessness and resignation are the most popular words in Moscow. There is less and less room for rational thinking and irrational factors play an increasingly important role.